Welcome to another episode of Life and Whiskey. As always, I'm Jordan. Today we are going to look at the Colonel. Colonel E.H. Taylor Buffalo Trace product. Allocated whiskey most of the time. Um, surprisingly difficult to find. Now, um, last month, or two months ago, I guess now. Last month? I don't know. Whatever. It's now November. It's like November 5th as I'm recording this. Something like that. And um, I was up in Montana for my anniversary a month or two ago wife and i did some fly fishing for our anniversary it was a lot of fun uh saw a bottle of this up in livingston montana they wanted 140 uh dollars for it um and when i was looking around online that's kind of the price that i found it for uh and i remembered that maybe like two years ago here in town we had it, it was available most of the liquor stores here in town and it was only like 40 something bucks maybe 50 or 60 from some of the higher price places and so i i uh i thought better of it and i was like no you know i remember it being cheaper than that i'm not going to drop 140 bucks for it although it has been some time since i'd seen it um and i am glad that i did because i paid uh Crap, I don't have my spreadsheet up, but it was $37, and I don't remember how much exactly. It was 37 something While this is coming up, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get the exact price. Here we go. Wow, that loaded a lot faster than I thought. Perfect. Um, boom, boom, boom. Buffalo Trace. Old Forester, Wild Turkey, Buffalo Trace, E.H. Taylor's, $37.59 here at the cheaper place, so under $40. Um, it's a bottled in bonds, they call it small batch, uh, so it's 50%, 100, you know, 50% ABV, 100 proof, um, pretty good whiskey, but uh, glad I did not pay $140, so $100 markup on that. Um, same with uh, this Weller Antique 107. Um, my wife picked this up. Same store here in town for $47 and change. Um, you know, not overpaying, thankfully. Actually, I got the price tag right here. $40, $47.09. Um, so glad we weren't overpaying for those because definitely I'm overpaying for some other whiskeys. Uh, I know that they're... Uh, a little more expensive. I'll before we even get into the bottle, let me say. Um, so, a uh, buddy of mine just sent me a picture yesterday. He was able to pick me up the George or the Remus, was it Remus Repeal Reserve, uh, batch six and batch five. Now, the batch six was 109 and change up in Montana, and the batch five, at least I hope he got me the five. Because uh, they had a couple other bottles there that were not the five. There was like a two and I don't know, some other stuff. So hopefully he got me the five. It's my fault if I wasn't more explicit. Um, but that was $119 and change. And then also uh, a Henry McKenna 10-year bottled and bond. Um, and that was like 75 bucks, which I think I overpaid for all those. Because last year... Um, back in Wisconsin, in Milwaukee, at the Total Wines, their, the Remus repeal was $68, uh, which I was not able to get, um, because I wasn't able to get anybody to go to the store for me. Um, and then also, I want to say in Madison, it was like 80 bucks, So, quite a bit cheaper. Um, so definitely overpaying, but once again, that's kind of the price range that they are, if you look at the overall averages across... Uh, the country, from what I've seen, kind of at $100, $120 range for those Remus repeals. Um, so, you know, a little rough on that. Uh, but, hey, you win some, you lose some, right? So, for under $40, E.H. Taylor, pretty excited about that. And uh, they're actually expecting to get another shipment in, so hopefully I can get that. And also, uh, they ordered me out some Calumet 16 single track uh and hopefully that like i saw it at the same store that that george remus was in um <clears throat> and it was 155 dollars there i don't know what the price is going to be here but i'm hoping that it's going to be under 100 
um, or right around that 100. It is a 16-year-old whiskey, so yeah. But hopefully, it should be a fair bit less than the 155 bucks. Uh, which again, if you look on the internet, it's kind of the going rate for that stuff. So, um, you know, win some, lose some, right? But all that aside, here we are, the Colonel E. H. Taylor. Um, you know, uh, boy, does this even have a? I'm gonna see if there's an age statement on here, just because I'm curious. Still the aged bottled, yada yada, copper pot, bum bum bum. Says it's blended from a bunch of different stuff, so it's not an age stated whiskey, um, you know, which that's fine. Um, I don't know. I've already broke into, oh, actually, it might even, might say here, pure limestone water selected, model equipment, blah, 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 blended cooperage, natural. Uh, it's not accidental. Sorry, I did not, of course, a little dead air space always fun to have. Um, but yeah, I'm not seeing the yellow label. Um. Yeah. Anyways, let's get into whiskey. That's enough chit chatting and whatever else. So, um, now I did try this once already, and I have to say, uh, I was a big fan of it when I just, you know, tapped into it originally. It was, so I've kind of waned from bourbon. I've just have so many bourbons, and a lot of them are just kind of run of the mill, meh, right down the middle. Uh, so much because whiskey's become such a hot commodity over the last couple of years. So many things are just rebranded, you know, so like some of the big distilleries are putting out whiskey and then other brands are buying them and just bottling them and calling that. So you get a lot of the same product, especially MGP. Uh, you get that from so many different companies under so many different labels, um, which funny enough, the Remus repeal is MGP, but um, that's OK. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things that. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of burnt out on it, and it's rare to get something new, interesting, exciting that I haven't had before, or that is um, really um, just exciting, I guess. As I said, I, I just bourbon does not do it for me anymore. I'm really into the smoky scotches um, and, uh, and finished stuff. Finished stuff is really what's getting me now. So um, the, the sherry cast finished scotches, the fi sherry cast finished... Um, so anything that's like double oaked or, or specifically sherry cast finish, um, you know, the bourbons and rye, that's where I start getting in interested. Uh, in fact, I just started putting a new hit list together on my phone um, where, what is it, like Chattanooga, um, Woodenville, New Riff, and um, Sagmore uh, are all companies that I'm starting to look at uh, keeping an eye out for, seeing if I can find them here locally and whatnot. Because um, there was a bunch of finished stuff that sounded really awesome. So looking forward to finding those. Um, and so anyways, it's just hard to come up with something that I really am excited about. But this E.H. Taylor, when I had it, it's not coloring outside of the lines. It was just really, really good, really uh, good depth of flavor and robust. On the nose, it smells dense. Um, Kind of has that signature buffalo trace to it, where you get that that um, that light floral note, a lot of apple, a little bit of sugar, brown sugar, and caramel in there. <clears throat> but it's very dense and hefty in the glass. Just a touch of ethanol coming through, but floral. I've always described buffalo trace as being floral. That's what I get. It's kind of this like cherry blossom and apple. I mean, really, apple's a, probably a better descriptor than floral. It smells very, very nice. It has really good legs. I don't know if you can see it in the glass, but man, it's oily. <clears throat> and now you're talking 100 proof whiskey for under 40 bucks. Yeah, I'm digging it. Classic bourbon flavor profile in the nose, though. <clears throat> nothing that's sticking out, nothing spiky, nothing off-putting. A lot of brown sugar, sweet notes. Going for the taste.
Mm. Sweet up front, brown sugar, caramel, kind of buttery smooth, creamy mouthfeel, pushes into an oak in the mid palate. That is a sweet end of the oak. You get just a little bit of a prickle of a oak tannin in there. Nothing um, real spiky or bitey. It's a very nice oak flavor profile that blends in really well with the sweet. It mixes in there, so it's like the sugar, the sweetness of the oak. Um, the ethanol, man, for 100 proof, it just kind of dings you in the middle, but not harshly. You know, it's just enough to let you know that it's there. kind of warms you up. Um, and then finishes, again, sweet and oaky. Caramel is the name of the game in the finish. Um, you get some of that apple in there. Ooh, that was just peanut <clears throat> on the nose. Mm. Um, I mean, just, again, all notes that you would expect from a bourbon. Extremely well done. A great sipping bourbon. Easy to drink straight. Um and neat and it just uh it's just good and for 40 bucks boy i'm gonna challenge myself to find something better than this uh and now that i have this huge collection of whiskey i'm gonna start doing some comparison videos or like hey do some head-to-head -head blind stuff or do something to try and pit some of my whiskeys against each other um because really that's what this channel is about is offering you a look into flavors and prices on whiskey to help you find something that you will appreciate at the best price you can um, without breaking the bank, getting the best bang for your buck. And if you can find this for under 40 bucks, which is where it should be, worth every cent. Um, really just one of the better whiskeys out there, in my opinion. One of the better bourbons out there. Um, I mean, the nose is just all sorts of sweet caramel. Brown sugar, a little bit molasses, peanut. Um, not changing a whole lot. It's just like which note is the more um, dense note at that particular nosing. They're just all there. I mean, it's just excellent. All those same things. Just each sip gets sweeter. The tannins pick up on the back end of that last sip a little bit more. To get a little bit of a spice in there um not super astringent it's just really really nice whiskey i highly recommend you go out and find this if you can for a reasonable price anything under 60 dollars, i'd say buy it on the spot um anything over than that oh sorry over than that anything over 60 dollars, still worth it if you can't find it readily it's worth paying more than 60 dollars if you're a big bourbon fan, if you like sweeter bourbons with a nice oak in there and a dense flavor, 100 proof, um, you know, to have one bottle on hand, are you going to pay twice or three times the price? If I can't find it anywhere else, okay, I'd probably do that, but uh, really try not to pay more than 60 bucks for it. The only way we're going to get away from these stupid retail prices is if people stop paying outrageous prices for stuff. I mean, the, the markup on this is all in the store, right? So, like, the the distillery's not making that much money. Uh, sorry, they're not making the outrageous money, right? So, if you look at the um, suggested retail or the MSRPs on these, uh, almost all the Buffalo Trace, even the Pappy, I want to say, I don't even know if like the Pappy 23 breaks $200 on MSRP. And yet people are paying thousands for it. Um, and in my opinion, if you watch this channel at all, I don't think it's worth 50 bucks. It's way over oaked and doesn't taste that good. Smooth, yes. Creamy, yes. Dense, yes. But not that good. Not my wheelhouse. Not what I'm looking for in a bourbon. Um, so the fact that people are paying outrageous price, I mean, people for the green label, of Weller, the Special Reserve, people are paying over $100. It's a $23 bottle, okay? Not worth it. So, um, yeah, and that that Weller 107, I think I paid $60 for the first bottle that I got, um, and I overpaid for that, as, you, as I said, $47 uh, now, but people are paying well over $100 for that. Um, yeah, not worth it. Uh, and those whiskeys, in my opinion, are nowhere near as good as this E.H. Taylor. So keep that in mind. Um, but that's my opinion. It's a great whiskey. 
uh, perfect bourbon, perfect sipping bourbon. Um, I'm going to say that's one of the top non-finished bourbons I've had as far as complexity, sweetness, um, smoothness in flavor transition. So like smooth, well overused um, terminology when it comes to whiskey or bourbon in general. Um, but what I mean by smooth is it's a smooth transition from flavor to flavor. It's very rounded in flavor profile. There's no spiky notes in there at all. Nothing's very, nothing's bitey or anything like that. I mean, it's just excellent, well put together whiskey. And um, yeah, if you can find it for under $60, pick yourself up a bottle. That's my opinion. Um, as always, like, comment, subscribe. I am going to start transitioning my videos over to Rumble and BitChute. So how it's set up right now is my Rumble channel. I think I have two I don't really understand Rumble, to be honest with you. But I have Life and Whisk. Because for some reason, when I made the my profile or whatever, it didn't get the EY on the whiskey. So there's Life and Whisk. And then under that profile, you make a channel. And that's Life and Whiskey. So... Check that stuff out, and how it's currently working is it as videos go up on my YouTube channel, it directly pulls and links those together somehow or something like that. So you should be able to find my Life and Whiskey channel videos. Anything that has been released on YouTube should be available now on Rumble. And then if you want to see what's uh, what all I've done so far, check out BitChute. I release videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays on BitChute, so the I think on YouTube my video counts like 150 something and on BitChute the video counts up to like 224 or something like that. So uh if you want to see what all is coming or if you want to you know watch more videos if you enjoy this content check out Life and Whiskey on bitshoot.com um otherwise check it out on um Rumble and I'm going to transition everything over to Rumble and BitChute mostly. There will still be a YouTube channel, but I'm really not going to pay much attention to that because I'm just over YouTube at this point along with all the other big tech stuff. So check out those channels. Um, I think you'd appreciate some of the stuff. My video quality kind of ebbs and flows along with the audio. It all depends on how my electronics treat me that day, uh, how the uploads go, and all that other stuff. Um, so... Sorry if anything's bad. If you have any questions or comments, drop those down um, down below, as always, in the comment section. At this point, because my videos have so little interaction, I'm able to reply and talk to pretty much anybody who makes a comment out there. Happy to make suggestions, happy to talk about whatever. Um, so go ahead, feel free to engage in those. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell on whatever platform you're looking at this on. And uh, thanks for watching. I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, starting to slow down in my whiskey purchases here. Um, well over 200 bottles at this point and definitely a retirement account's worth of whiskey. Um, coming up, I have the next video is going to be another bourbon, the uh, Old Forester 1920. I bought the 2022 release of that and we're going to compare it to the old release. Uh, and then I got, uh, I'll probably do some art bags in this video shoot. And then I got two more Islas and then a Taiwanese whiskey. And that'll kind of be it for a little while till I get that whiskey from my buddy up in Montana. Um, and yeah, it'll probably just be like a couple new whiskeys every once in a while. But for now, I have enough videos to last a couple of months. Um, so I'll keep releasing those. But at some point, probably early 2023, I think things are going to start slowing down a little bit because I'm not going to be buying as much whiskey. Um, just because A, it's super expensive. I've already spent well, way too much money on whiskey, but also, um, I got a ton of whiskey to drink. I know such a terrible problem to have, right? But, uh, I found myself going back to only a handful of things. Um, so many of the whiskeys that I got, um, are just meh, you know, they're just kind of gen general generic whiskey. And so it's, um, I don't really find myself coming back to those, so it's going to take a while to kind of burn through some of that stuff. So, um, just as a whole, going to slow down. I try not to drink too much. I, you know, maybe have a glass a night or every couple of nights. Um, and so, I uh, it's going to take a while to burn through stuff. And so, I got plenty of whiskey to last me plenty of time. And so, we're going to slow things down a little bit. But 
as always, thanks for watching. You guys have yourselves a great day. I do greatly appreciate it. Check out all the different platforms that Life & Whiskey is on. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys have yourselves a great day. We'll catch you in the next video.